I can't count how many times I've read or heard some version of this statement. I've had this amazing story idea for years, but just can't find the time to write it. Or every time I try to start my graphic novel, I get overwhelmed and give up. And then there are others whose constraints also include budget and technical skills. They say things like, I dream of publishing a children's book, but I'm not an artist, or I can't afford an illustrator for my story. I've said this personally, and for over a decade, I've heard the same frustrations echoed by other storytellers in different genres. Whether it's comics or novels or what have you, it's always the same formula. I want to bring my story to life, but I can't because of X, Y, and Z. And so we find ourselves hoping, endlessly waiting, for the day that we could finally pursue our passion. But between work and family, it seems like there'll never be room for it. Even if we somehow carved out some time, we're then faced with the challenge of learning new skills, such as drawing, designing, or navigating the complexities of publishing. But what if I tell you that these problems are a thing of the past, that I have a simple solution to make story creation more fun and frictionless? Well, not completely frictionless, but you'll be able to create your story with the limited time that you have, with no technical skills to begin with, while spending next to nothing. You might think this is too good to be true. I would too, if I were you. But it's 2024. Things are different now. You must realize that. Because oftentimes, the most groundbreaking ideas initially appear counterintuitive. They defy common knowledge, but that's exactly why they succeed. To forge new paths, we must choose the road less traveled. I'll show you how to bring your story to life, regardless of your circumstances. Just commit an hour a day to do this, and you'll be amazed how, and how beautifully and, and how swiftly your story develops. But before I share these pioneering techniques, I first want to demolish a common obstacle that's in most creators' way. Fear of failure. There are three hurdles I'll guide you through in this video, but fear of failure needs to be handled first because it's very devious. How devious? Our ego doesn't even want to admit that we have it. I did some research on behavioral psychology. Turns out that people afflicted by this fear might not be aware that it is the underlying reason why they hesitate to start something, or if they do start, they fail to persist in their endeavors. So how do you overcome it? Simple. Don't fail. Or make failure impossible. You do that by setting the right metric for success. As a storyteller, you only have one job, to tell your story in the most compelling, authentic, and fun manner. For that, you don't even need external validation. If the output makes you proud and you enjoy the process, then it's a successful story and you should keep doing it. But oftentimes, beginners fall into the trap of expecting financial success when starting. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make money of your creations, but unrealistic expectations can actually kill any chances of making it. Like, I know a guy who procrastinates creating his comic book idea because, get this, he wants to get paid before even trying. Imagine that, instead of doing the actual project or learning the craft, he's sending out emails to different publishers pitching his plot summary, even though neither the characters nor the story have been established. <sighs> For your own good, I'm gonna be blunt. If you need to get paid to motivate you to start, then the world probably doesn't need to hear your story, because even you don't believe in it enough to take a chance. Why would anyone else? The most remarkable stories usually come from people who say, I've got this story stuck in my head, or they, they have this itch that they have to tell the story. It bothers them that they can't. And if you got this far into the video, chances are you might be that person. And by the way, if a story isn't well received at first, that doesn't automatically make it a failure. Blade Runner was considered a flop when it came out in 1984. It barely earned any money. Yet now, not only does it have a cult following, but everybody considers it a foundational work of the cyberpunk genre. When the book Moby Dick was published, it was met with harsh criticisms and poor sales. Now, it's considered a masterpiece of American literature. You never know if your idea is just ahead of its time. In light of this, why not focus on what you can control and what actually matters most? Revert your metric of success from financial gain and fame back to your original desire, which is crafting stories that make you feel alive. Only then will failure become impossible and your creative process becomes a liberating experience, as you'll no longer have monetary expectations to weigh you down. Ironically, this will put you in a better position to make money because readers can feel the authenticity and passion in your work. Fear of failure has been addressed, check, but there are three more constraints that we have to clear in order to bring your story to life. And that is time, budget, and technical skills. Given the complexities of these issues, don't expect uh, simple fixes like manage your time better or start small. I'm not gonna regurgitate cliched advice found all over the internet. 
let's face it, you're here because standard solutions don't fit into your specific needs. I have but one solution for all these roadblocks. Artificial Intelligence, AI. Hold on, I know what some of you might be thinking. Using AI might make my work unoriginal. It certainly can, but it doesn't have to. AI-generated works can't be copyrighted. That would be true if we let AI do all the work, but we won't. No, where's the fun in that? The US Copyright Office states that in cases where AI-generated work is subsequently edited or manipulated by a human in a sufficiently creative manner, the resulting work constitutes an, as an original work that can be copyrighted. Therefore, to be copyrightable, the work just needs to be creatively edited, which is almost a given if you're doing AI-powered storytelling. And don't worry, I'll teach you the specific steps to do that in upcoming videos. Now you might think, what about ethical issues? AI devalues the work of artists, blah blah. Well, here's a remedy for that. Once you start earning, why not share a portion of your profits to artists that inspired you to create? Anyone can pay their dues. Don't make this as an excuse. But if your work isn't earning yet, then ethics need not be your primary concern. Just create and have fun. Let the haters hate. Now that we got the concerns out of the way, let's get back to bringing your story to life. When it comes to using AI, there is a right way and there is a wrong way. In my experience, having used AI tools for one and a half years, the right way is to do most of the creative tasks yourself while using the AI to fill in the gaps of in your knowledge and skills. This is so important that it needs to be said twice. You, task you good at or like. AI, task you not good at or don't like. Clear? Like if you love writing stories, that is your core task. Do that yourself so you avoid losing your creative edge. But when you do encounter concepts that are unclear, you can use the AI to ask highly specific questions, the kind that Google searches don't resolve effectively. Here's an example. Let's say I'm writing a sci-fi story, I'm in the world building phase, I'm trying to establish a power that harnesses dark matter, but I don't know shit about dark matter. Therefore, I should ask the AI specific questions about dark matter, like, if my character is XYZ, can he manipulate dark matter in so and so? Another example, suppose my story includes a segment on the 80 years war. The main plot could be something else entirely, I just need specific info on the 80 years war as a plot device. Should I do a full research on the subject? When I could simply ask the AI the exact details my story requires? See, this approach not only saves time and addresses skill limitations, but also cuts costs. As AI tools like ChatGPT and MetaAI are available for free, if you haven't used them, I'll put a link in the description so you can try them out. Even more interesting, when you provide detailed info about your story to the AI, the benefits compound as these tools now possess memory capabilities. Multiple brainstormings can be stored in one chat, and the AI will remember all of them. The AI can help identify plot inconsistency or suggest potential twists you haven't thought of. You don't have to use every suggestion. I get that most people want to stay as original as possible, but what you can do is selectively incorporate the suggestions that could fit into or enhance your narrative. I'm telling you, AI can significantly expand your creative horizons while ensuring you retain creative control of your artistic vision, as long as you don't let it do all the work. Now, I'm not gonna dwell on this further as I've given longer demonstrations in other videos, you can check them out. But are you starting to see the value of AI now? It's like having the ultimate assistant, a super genius who holds the world's knowledge but only talks when spoken to. I see it as a game changer for us creatives, knowing that a lot of us are introverts. Not to say we're shy or anything, but we, we like to keep our thoughts to ourselves. And having a super intelligent collaborator who isn't an annoying chatterbox will remove a lot of the friction that comes with writing. Experiencing writer's block? Maybe go for a walk. Maybe brainstorm with ChatGPT. Why not do both? But this solution goes beyond the writing process. Over time, people are getting more visually inclined, so you might want to include graphics in your stories. Maybe you want to create a visual novel or webcomics or slideshow story, I don't know what you want. But hiring an illustrator is costly, and learning to become one would take too long. But thanks to AI image generators like Midjourney and Leonardo, it's pretty easy and affordable to do graphic stories these days. Let's say you have a story script already. All you gotta do is choose an art style, and then generate your characters. You can generate unlimited poses of your characters, put them in different backgrounds, and then you got yourself a bunch of scenes. You then compile different scenes and arrange them in order, and you got yourself a graphic story. Great. Not gonna lie, doing this takes skill too. But it's nowhere near as difficult as learning to draw by hand. PewDiePie may have learned to draw an anime girl in 100 days, but you'll know how to use AI effectively in less than a week. 
significant advantage. Personally, when I first got into AI storytelling more than, more than a year ago, I could barely illustrate using stick figures. But now, I've published two children's books, created a webcomic, and currently working on my manual graphic novel. It's taking forever honestly, but it's the best creation I've had yet. Now, what AI tool should you use for illustration? I use Midjourney myself, and it's what I recommend for someone who wants a user-friendly interface. However, it costs $10 to $30 per month depending on your plan, and I totally understand that some of you might not want to spend money early, so I'm going to share free alternatives like Crayon and Stable Diffusion. Check the description for links. So now you can create your story with visuals without spending so much time or money or learning how to draw. But what about publishing your story? You obviously want to show people what you've got, but what if it costs money? What if it's too complicated? What if it's too much work? Luckily, none of that is true. The biggest platform for publishing books is Amazon, and it's free. Just go to Amazon KDP, I'll put a link in the description, fill in your details, and then self-publish your book. Another platform is Global Comics. It's a marketplace specialized for, well, comics. Both platforms accept AI-assisted work, so you'll have no problem. After publishing, you can promote your book by sharing the link with friends, family, and even strangers, both online and offline. You then decide whether to focus on promoting your book or immediately working on the next one. Either choice is good. Now, if you thought my commitment to your learning ends at the end of this video, you're dead wrong. Buckle up because I have two more initiatives to help you in your storytelling journey. So, assuming you plan to follow my advice and start creating your story today, you'll likely encounter challenges in some form. Doesn't matter what it is, there's always something, right? So the first initiative I launch is a free community platform where you, me, and other storytellers can share ideas and support each other. Whether you have a question about a tool or a feature or something spe something more specific, simply post in the community and both I and other members will be there to help you. This group will be hosted on my Discord server. You can join by clicking the link also in the description. Know that this community is brand new, so I'm currently the only member, but that's a good thing for you because I'll be more accessible. The second initiative I'm excited to introduce is my AI-powered comic creation course. I chose sequential storytelling as my current focus. This means that the course will be particularly valuable for those creating comics, manga, and similar formats. Even before I started this channel, my goal has been to provide free, high-quality education in storytelling. Now that my channel is past 200 subscribers, it's time to deliver on that. I plan to release the course in a series of videos, organized as a playlist here on YouTube. To stay updated on the launch, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Also, be sure to sign up to my newsletter. I'll be sharing some perks there that might not make it to YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video valuable. I'll see you next time.